folks, Joseph A. Sabora here, and you're in for a special treat because I'm going to review a classic 1986 comedy that I grew up watching since I was only a baby. Yeah. <laughs> it came out on December 12, 1986, and it's um, a comedy that was produced by the same producer that gave us Saturday Night Live. It's called The Free Amigos. That's right, the classic film that stars Chevy Chase, Steve Martin, and Martin Short. And this is sort of in a tradition of The Seven Samurai by Akira Asawa, and of course uh, The Magnificent Seven, except this is more of a comedy version of, of the two, which has three of those veterans that I love, you know, Chevy Chase, Steve Martin, and Martin Short. And of course, this is the DVD edition that I got back in 2013. This was um, quite different from the original 1999 DVD release because unfortunately, the original release actually had a wear and tear uh, transfer that didn't look quite as good as it seems, although it's a lot different. Yeah, it had some problems with it, such as the print damages, the credits got cut right in the middle of it but it also featured that one line yeah that famous line that Joe Mantegna had played in the film as Henry Fugelman you know the producer behind all these silent Free Amigos films this is where he actually says that one line that sadly has been cut in this release as well as the Blu-ray release he says your ass is streamline. The free amigos are history. That's right. I didn't even notice that the line was cut when I saw that because when I watched the Blu ray, which is right here, I checked on the deleted scenes just to see if, if the line has been cut. And guess what? The line was there on the deleted scenes, but it was not in the movie itself. So I had the feeling that maybe they cut it out because of uh, the fact that maybe this was originally shown when it first came out. So yeah, because I know John Landis wanted to uh, keep everything as it seems. So quite frankly, this was the movie which John Landis was having some problems. I mean, he was already he had a a different cut of the film, which actually featured uh, Fran Drescher and Sam Kiniston. To be in one of those two roles. Now they had some of uh, Fran Dresser's scenes uh, from the beginning of the film and they had an alternate uh, opening to the film which looks a lot different from the opening that they use in the film. So so yeah it's like they get to show more of Mexico and all those other scenes that they had so yeah it, it was a shame that all the other half of the deleted scenes that they were going to include on this set were totally missing because unfortunately they got lost they like they must have thrown it in the trash you know big mistake although if someone did have another different copy of it then maybe they're in luck that maybe they might exist somewhere but other than that though yeah that was the only thing they had left on this blu-ray release it even has the uh, the cast interviews which has all three of them Chevy Chase Steve Martin and Martin Short, but unfortunately it was only a short half of the featurette. I found the longer featurette of it online on YouTube, so now you get to have the rest of it. It doesn't have the trailer included as well. So yeah, once again, they keep dismissing the trailer because it's so rare. And plus it even has uh, a very rare magazine article from Empire Magazine where it has... Uh, the entire cast as sort of a 25th anniversary reunion back in 2011. <laughs> yeah, you can see all this uh, other stuff that they had here, such as this one. Yeah, and uh, and even uh, this one. It's really cool. I mean, they had a lot of stuff that they put into it, even though this was very small. But I think the biggest one look even <laughs> have more to it, so it's not so bad for this set because 
it was definitely worth it. Also, just to see the difference, the DVD version has a, uh, <laughs> yeah, black DVD, while the Blu-ray is, is clear, <laughs> as it seems, yeah. So, like this one, yeah. And, anyway, I really did enjoy this movie a lot. You know, it looks even better than ever. The transfer on this Blu-ray, though, is is basically filtered with DNR, but it's not bad DNR. In fact, it looks even better than ever, so they remastered it in a much better quality. So I figured the DVD version had the same thing either. But other than that, though, it's, um, I really enjoyed it. I think it's a lot better than I thought, better than its reputation, I presume, because, yeah, most critics had gave a mixed review for this film, and I know Roger Ebert didn't like it somehow. He gave it one star. It's such a shame. Because I don't think it's as bad as he thinks. I think it's as memorable as, as any other comedies I've seen back in the 80s. And I know for sure because I grew up watching uh, Chevy Chase, Martin Short, Steve Martin, and, as well as Bill Murray, you know, John Belushi, Dan Aykroyd, and all the rest. <laughs> yeah. And even John Candy, for that matter. So that's my kind of comedy. So anyway, let, let's get back to the review, because I, I just can't wait to review the whole entire thing. Yeah, well, sort of. It starts Chevy Chase with Steve Martin, who's the co-writer and co-producer. Martin Short. Yeah, Patrice Martinez. Yeah, she's very good in this. Alfonso Aro. Tony Planta went on to do other things, including the TV series Bakersfield PD. Joe Mantegna, who's very good in this film, by the way. <laughs> yep, I bet you're seeing this, Mia, because <laughs> your father was excellent in the movie. <laughs> yes, I'm talking to you. <laughs> Phil Hartman, yeah, God rest his soul, because he's such a great, funny comedian. He's went on to do a lot of stuff. He even did some voice acting for Dennis the Menace, and as well as uh, Kiki's Delivery Service, and all his other stuff. John Lovitz, Philip Gordon, Kyle Wolf, Norbert Weiser, Kyle LaFon, and Rebecca Underwood, as well as Randy Newman, who's also the composer and the writer of free songs for the film. Elmer Bernstein uh, wrote the score. Yeah, he even created all of the songs here. Written by Lauren Michaels from Saturday Night Live with Steve Martin and Randy Newman. And it's directed by John Landis. So let's get right to it. The movie begins set in San Apoco, Mexico in 1916. The notorious bandit by the name of El Gapo, who's played by Alfonso Awu, along with his gang of thugs, including his partner Jeff Fay, who's played by Tony Plana, are basically collecting protective money by the entire town until they're starting to do something stupid by <laughs> burning the whole place down. Meanwhile, a young woman named Carmen, who's played by Patrice Martinez, who happens to be the daughter of the village leader, were searching for someone who can come to rescue them you know, from these bandits. While visiting a small village church, she was watching a silent film of the Free Amigos, you know, all played by Chevy Chase, Steve Martin, and Martin Short. So they thought that once they watched this, they thought maybe this would be their answer to all their problems. So they decided to send a telegram to them all the way addressed to Hollywood, California, where all three of them, Lucky Day, Dusty Bottoms, and Little Ned Nederlander, you know, were already, you know, back in the studio, where basically Harry Fugelman, who's played by Joe Mantegna, along with his uh, partners, who's the studio owners, who's played by Phil Hartman and John Lovitz, already telling them that they're losing a lot of money yeah, especially since you know they were earning them you know with all the films that they were going for but unfortunately yeah they all became bigger flops so they took off all their clothes 
and they got fired. Uh, they finally received a telegram you know, mentioning about the notorious bandit El Gopo, you know, which they referred to the name Infamous. Already reading their, their note, as part of this idea, they thought they were going to go over there just for a show, you know, maybe to stop them or so. So as a result, they wind up breaking into the studio, you know, getting all their suits, and they were on their way to Santa Poco where they meet Carmen and the rest of the village. But meanwhile, a German pilot who was a fast shooting, and he's played by Carl Wolf, is also looking for a Gopo who just arrived just before they did, surprisingly enough, at the cantina. So once the Free Amigos had arrived inside, you know, they're just performing a show and they're singing My Little Buttercup and and almost leaving the locals themselves confused. Well, <laughs> well you know how it is. The, the real German associates had arrived at the cantina, proving themselves that that with their pistols they're gonna go after them. The next morning, you know, once they're you know getting ready for the event that's gonna happen, you know, with the rest of El Gopo's crews, yeah, you know, they, they came back to the village and they and the amigos decided to do a Hollywood style um, stunt show, so they thought maybe they can scare them off, and they did, until they're gonna plan on bringing in El Gopo to go after. In which that follows afterwards. So yeah, since they became heroes, you know, to stop them already, you know, all the girls and everybody were greeting them, and you know, they were singing some songs, talking about some stories and all that. But then, finally, when El Gapo and the rest of the crew had arrived, yeah, once again they're doing another stunt show until suddenly, <laughs> uh, Lucky Day got shot in the arm only to claim that the bullets <laughs> that they were using compared to what they were using are real bullets so now they were frightening and they're about to run for their lives and yet El Gopo and his crew decided to tear down the entire city so it's all burned down and kidnapped Carmen so uh, yeah once they finally went back they they found out everything destroyed and and they got it and they said that you know Karn was kidnapped and everything so they figured you know they didn't want to be a wimp for trying that they decided that they were going to go all the way you know just to stop them so they figured yeah this will be the better way to save Carmen and the rest so once they tried to ride there they, they spotted a singing bush you know sung by Randy Newman and they were trying to <laughs> get past to the uh, the invisible swordsman, which Dusty Bottom accidentally shot him <laughs> on the back. Yeah, it was it was supposed to be one of the the calling answers for them to arrive, and that was a hilarious scene. And then when they finally got there, they they saved Carmen. They already got caught by them actually. They caught um, Lucky Day inside the dungeon and you're know, already being caught by all these uh, weights and everything yeah Dusty Bottom is already you know, disguised you know to save her and you know going out to all the guards and everything and then and the German pilot is just uh, showing uh, <laughs> Ned Nanderlander to uh, show if he's the fast shooter you know, even though he says that He's not capable of killing people, so yeah, once he tried the the huge gun, and it was really heavy, yeah, well, he got uh, the German pilot right, and he went all the way back. So they finally escaped with the airplane with the big balls, as he referred to uh, early in the film, and they're actually ready for another plan, so this time, you know, since they mentioned this in one of the silent films, they thought maybe this would be a good plan to stop them. So they finally did, and once El Gapo finally went back to the village, yeah, they all were getting shot at by all the Free Amigos, and they're like playing one by one, one by one. And then they found out they were <laughs> that there are a lot of villagers, you know, dressed up as the Free Amigos, yeah, you know, since they all, you know, sold like the wind, yeah, sewing all all their clothes. They stopped them. <laughs>
So that was cool. And then, you know, everything was going great. You know, they agreed to them to their for for what they were doing. They saved their lives and they finally, you know, left the, the village and the movie ends. With the song The Free Amigos. <laughs> yeah. And I really loved that movie. It, it was cute. It was fun. It was hilarious. I mean, it had its problems with some of the flaws that were going for, but I didn't care. I, I really enjoyed it. Also, I forgot to mention that, you know, when they were trying to escape from El Gapo, he was already celebrating his 40th birthday, which apparently <laughs> Joffrey decided to make it as Ferdy Free so he can actually marry to Carmen you know, as a result of this. So, <laughs> yeah, so they actually escaped. But it was funny. I, I really enjoy all the cast. Uh, you yeah, know, once again, Chevy Chase, Steve Martin, and Martin Short did an awesome job playing the Free Amigos. They were definitely the right team to do this. In fact, I remember watching a Saturday Night Live episode when they were uh, talking about the film. And Steve Martin was just, <laughs> you know, he was just uh, all furious because they never focus on him. And <laughs> so he, they wound up doing a song and dance with, with the rest of the Saturday Night Live cast. And I remember there was that scene where <laughs> he was watching the TV and he says, Oh, look, it's me watching me, me, me. <laughs> If you saw this episode, you'll you'll find out. It, it's hilarious. And, and yeah, I, I also love uh, Patrice Martinez. You know, I thought she was a beautiful actress, you know, playing the role as Carmen. You know, he was trying to, you know, help him and everything. It was cool. And I love Tony Plana as Joffe. Yeah, he was hilarious, you know, <laughs> considering that he's the bad guy, partner of... Uh, of El Gapo, yeah, who's very good in the film too, you yeah, know, Alfonso Will. Yeah, and, and I like the set that they chose. They actually filmed it at Simi Valley, California. This is definitely the perfect place to film an actual set of, of Mexico. It, it looks amazing the way it was shot. I mean, I know they'd use a lot of cheap film stock to film all this, but it looked better than, than any other that I've seen, so yeah. Because I know John Landis was having trouble having to film this movie due to his uh, his trial, you know, from that incident that happened during the set of the Twilight Zone, the movie, you know, when Vic Morrow, the actor who was in that one segment, the very first segment, got killed along with um, the kid. And yeah, it was one of the biggest tragedies that happened in movie history, yeah, long before the that Crow incident that happened with uh, Brandon Lee, who, who actually got shot, not even knowing that the prop gun actually had real bullets. So, yeah. But, um, but at least he managed to get a hit already. In fact, it actually did pretty well at the box office. It went at number two, and, you know, along with all the other films that's following, it came out before Little Shop of Horrors, where Steve Martin was playing you know, a jerk in the film, yeah, the boyfriend of Audrey, yeah, I love the score that they chose by Elmer Bernstein, I love <laughs> Randy Newman's uh, songs that he actually uh, wrote, and and it was just hilarious too when he did the, the singing Bush, and then, you know, he's, he's a very good writer, because he's been known for writing a lot of great songs, such as I Love L.A., and and the song uh, from Toy Story called You Got a Friend in Me. Yeah. He's one of the greatest uh, singer and songwriters of all time. Yeah. I'm, I'm glad he's still with us, too. Yeah. Because he, he does very well with Pixar as well as all the other films. Yeah. It made $25 million when it was um, for its budget. So it worked. That was enough to make its uh, money. But um, it was great and definitely worth recommending if, if you really uh, enjoy comedies like The Free Amigos. It's right there. So anyway, I give The Free Amigos a solid five stars. I'm Joseph A. Sabora, and I'll see you later. Bye.